LicenseWare's Red Hat Deployment Manager is an essential tool for optimizing and ensuring compliance of your Red Hat environments. Once you've processed your discovery data for Red Hat Enterprise Linux and middleware, two reports become available, the Red Hat Deployment Overview and the Red Hat Audit Report. Let's start with the overview. In the Overview Report's graphical section, we highlight the infrastructure's composition with a snapshot of physical and virtual machines. The subscription status distribution identifies immediate areas needing attention. The OS version distribution indicates the diversity of versions in use. And finally, we can see trends in backdated subscriptions and subscription needs over time, guiding focused compliance efforts. The first table Red Hat Virtualization Details table offers a pivotal snapshot of the virtualization landscape within a Red Hat environment. It outlines the relationships between physical hosts and virtual guests across different clusters, providing key insights into the organization's licensing footprint. For each device, the table presents a clear view of both the physical host and the virtualized environments, all operating with Red Hat Enterprise Linux. The significance of the table extends to the details of add-ons at both the virtual guest and physical host levels, revealing customized features that may impact licensing, such as Pacemaker for cluster management. It also specifies hardware allocations, such as the number of sockets, which directly correlate with licensing demands. By giving a clear overview of where and how Red Hat products are deployed, this table becomes an invaluable tool for ensuring that every aspect of the environment is licensed appropriately, preventing both over and under licensing. Next, we have the RHEL Subscriptions Details Table. This serves as a vital tool for managing your Red Hat license compliance and financial forecasting. It meticulously details the assignment of Red Hat subscriptions to each physical host and virtual guest, delineating their active or lapsed status. For each system, the table provides clarity on standard and extended update support subscription allocations, their quantities, and the financial commitment these entail through clear pricing. Of particular importance in this table is the column indicating the backdated subscriptions required. This reflects the number of subscriptions needed for compliance during any period where the systems were used without an active subscription. Such backdated subscriptions are critical for bringing an organization's software usage into full compliance with Red Hat's licensing terms. They are a proactive measure to address any past software usage that was not covered under a current subscription mitigating the risk of penalties and ensuring that past use is properly licensed. Next, we have the RHEL Devices Overview Table. This section lays out a clear snapshot of your scanned Red Hat Enterprise Linux machines, detailing their OS versions and virtualization status, directly correlating with their subscription needs. The table outlines the CPU socket count and the subscriptions required showing you the compliance status of each machine marked as active, expired, subscribed, or not subscribed, ensuring you're aware of any action needed to maintain continuous coverage. Add-on packages are listed next to each machine, highlighting additional subscription considerations. The subscription status and subscriptions timestamp help track the currency of your subscriptions, enabling proactive management of your Red Hat environments with LicenseWare's Red Hat Deployment Manager. Moving on to the RHEL Devices Deployment Details table, this shows the total number of backdated subscriptions required for each device, serving as a concrete reference for compliance and subscription management. The subscriptions timestamp and script run timestamp serve as crucial points of evidence, marking the exact times when subscriptions were assessed or adjusted. These timestamps are vital for auditing purposes as they help verify the historical accuracy of your subscription records and compliance actions. Lastly, we have the Actionable Insights table, which provides actions that could be taken in order to improve the report, such as missing data that needs processing. Let's now look at the Red Hat Audit Report, which provides intricate details on the Red Hat middleware products and RHEL subscription requirements. Navigating through the complexities of licensing for Red Hat middleware can be a challenging endeavor. It's crucial to have a precise understanding of these elements to avoid compliance pitfalls and ensure optimal utilization of resources. In the graphical section of this report, 
We begin with the top 10 machines by backdated subscriptions. This visualization identifies the high priority machines that require immediate attention for licensing reconciliation. We also examine the top 10 machines by middleware products count. This graph is particularly telling, illustrating the prevalence of middleware deployments and assisting in pinpointing where the majority of your middleware resources are concentrated. The RHEL deployment details table provides a comprehensive look at our Red Hat environments, outlining the installed products along with their corresponding subscription types. Here, the data familiarizes us again with machine names, virtualization status, subscription requirements, and more. But it's the SLA designations that draw our focus now. These SLAs are not just operational markers. They're financial considerations, too. The higher service levels indicated by premium SLAs point to a greater cost and potential importance. This is where the value of optimization comes into sharp relief, considering their environments, where the balance between cost, value, and risk is critical. The production or development deployment types clearly identified in this section allow for tailored support strategies that align with the needs of each environment. It's this strategic alignment that ensures our infrastructure is not only compliant and efficient, but also cost-effective and tuned for the highest ROI. Skipping over the real subscription details table as we covered this earlier, we reach the middleware deployment details table. This provides a strategic overview of your Red Hat middleware deployments, highlighting installations of key products such as JBoss and AMQ across your machines. The deployment footprint reveals whether installations are on virtual or physical cores, with the number of cores dedicated to each product suggesting the scale of middleware utilization. This directly impacts not only performance considerations, but also licensing implications, given the resource-based pricing models often in play. Again, it's key to note the presence of premium SLAs across the board, which while offering higher support levels, come with increased costs. This emphasizes the importance of optimization and the need for a nuanced understanding of the return on investment each middleware product brings to your operations, particularly within production environments where system uptime and reliability are paramount. Lastly, we have the middleware subscription details. This table zeroes in on the recommended subscriptions tailored for each device, considering the specific middleware products deployed required SLAs, capacity of the device, and virtualization type. The financial details, subscription prices, and total subscription costs are also laid out, providing clear insights into the investment required for each middleware product. This comprehensive view aids in achieving a cost-optimal subscription model that aligns the necessary support with the deployed products, ensuring financial prudence in your middleware strategy. If you want to find out more about the Red Hat Deployment Manager, visit our website, or reach out to us at sales at licenseware.io. If you want to find out more on Red Hat licensing, also visit our website. We have published two very detailed white papers on the subject, giving you everything you need to conduct the analysis yourself manually, along with much needed context. Thank you.